I'm going to be remove, removing the rear bumper on this 2007 RAV4 so that I can install a new backup camera. Uh, this is the camera here. And the camera I have in right now is right in the center of the bumper. Now, this camera sits nice and flush inside the bumper, which is really nice. Um, the only problem is, is that the actual angle of the camera is really limited. And I want something with a bit better angle. So this new camera has a much wider angle and is a much better camera image. The only problem is that uh, it doesn't mount flush in the bumper. So I'm gonna have to remove this, this one and then use a Dremel probably and kind of cut out that area and figure out how to mount this one maybe with some two-part epoxy or something like that. So, but the first step is I have to get this bumper cover off. Now, they're pretty simple to do. And basically what you need to do, open the trunk, take out these, uh, there should be four of these little push pins. Over here is the hardest part, it's a 10 mil, um, 10 mil nut that, or bolt that is kind of behind the door. And the best way to get onto it is with a wrench and I have this ratcheting wrench. So I can get on it like so and then slowly undo it. So that's the hardest part. Then there's another uh, push type retainer here or Christmas tree, whatever you want to call them. And then down on this side, I'm gonna have to take the mud flap off and then there's a couple of retainers like so. So it's, it's just, uh, it's not too bad. It's probably about 10 minutes worth of work to, uh, oh, and that's on both sides. And um, once you get it all undone, the rear bumper cover will just kind of slide off. Now you may need a second person's help because getting the cover past the door here can be kind of tricky. Um, I, I'm able to do it by myself, but it's not easy. So having another person makes it a lot easier. All right, so um, I'll show you the next step once I get this cover off. So to give you an idea of what I did, on the inside, um, I drilled a hole right where this little black circle was. Um, there's like another one over here. So there's already a hole underneath that, kind of about this size, but it wasn't big enough to get the actual plugs through. Sorry, there we go. So it wasn't big enough to get those plugs through. So I drilled it out so it was a little bit bigger. Down here, there's already a hole, just like over here, and it already had a plug. So then what I did was I cut the, the plug in half and then drilled a hole through it so I could actually put the wires through so that way it kind of seals it. So what I need to do is I'm going to pull these out. There's one. And and these were not easy to get in the first place, so it's going to be fun trying to put it all back together. I'm just going to pull one through there, one through there, and then there we go. So there's the bumper cover off. Now if I tilt this up like so, you can see how I have this mounted. And then this should actually just push right through and I can get it out. And then I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna get this other one in. Okay, so I have this one out now. And basically you can kind of see here how it just kind of clips in. So all you have to do is drill the hole and then this just pushes in. It works really well, it looks really nice and clean. Um, I really liked how the end result was, except for, like I said, the, the actual operation. Now, for this part, um, it's trying to get uh, the wires through this hole. Now let's see, are these any longer? Uh, if anything, they're a little bit shorter, so that's, again, not going to be very fun trying to get that to work, but I will prevail. So now the next step is figuring out how to get this mounted. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hog that out like with the Dremel. Maybe I'll just kind of trace this piece onto a piece of paper and then trace it onto there. Dremel it out so that this just kind of squeezes through nicely. And then I'll probably just end up using two part epoxy and epoxying this to the underside to like where the bumper is and then go from there. So I think that's what I'll try doing. Okay, so I used a Dremel to uh, hog this out a little bit. Um, so just so that this would fit in from behind. So I'm just gonna try to hold it in there to show you. There we go. So um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some two-part epoxy and epoxy it 
um, or on the inside, so to make it so that it uh, doesn't fall out. I don't really want to put screws in from the top, um, so I'll just use some good two-part epoxy. And then once that's all epoxied in, then I'm going to use some black silicone to uh, seal around those edges so that rain and water and stuff like that doesn't creep past. I now have this uh, epoxied on the inside. So you can see all the uh, two-part epoxy around the base, attaching it to the bumper. Um, and you can see how it's kind of sticking through right there. And I got it as square as I think I could. Um, so it should work. Now while that's setting, I thought I'd quickly talk about how to wire these cameras in. So here's the wiring that this camera comes with. And because I already had this done for my old camera, I don't know how to do it now, but I might as well walk you through how to do that. So this here is the video cable, and this is what's going to go from the radio at the front of the vehicle. So the reason why this is so long is because you need to plug it in at the back of whatever stair you have at the front, and then root it. So the way that I did it was from the back of the stereo, then uh, up underneath the steering column, like down where your feet are, and then these zip sap straps or ties to keep it out of the way. And then, with most vehicles, so I'm just gonna pull this out. There we go. You can pull these panels off. So, this panel here, which you can see is not held on very well, um, pops off. This kick panel here pops off, and then you can just run the wire along here. Then you can pass the wire past this trim panel here, and then in the back door, it's the same thing. So you pop this panel off, run it that way. I folded this seat forward, and then pulled this interior panel off as well. Now with all interior stuff, it's it's a lot of uh, kind of playing around with things. Um, you can see the cable kind of comes up through here, so I had to pull this um, whole black piece apart off which includes like a screw there there's I think a screw down here underneath this and a lot of times it's just also just you have to pull on the plastic and everything just starts popping off kind of like this panel here so the panel that comes across here is this one which is held on by these plastic clips so basically I just pulled up really hard and this panel pops off so that's what this cable here is for now they give you these two red wires because you also need a power um, and also a reverse input. I got my reverse input from, so here's, well, let's go with this one. So here's the uh, um, cable, goes to the back of the radio. This end of the red wire will go to the reverse input to the stereo because the stereo needs to know when you put it into reverse here. At this end, you plug it in to your camera, but this little red wire has to go to a reverse power, some sort of reverse power. And the best place to get that is your reverse lights. So I wired it, I'm not sure if I can pull this off and show you. Uh, I'm not sure if that shows you, but basically you need to figure out where the power for your reverse light bulb is and splice into that. So, you know, solder it or use uh, little crimp connectors. Once you have your yellow uh, plug plugged into the radio and one, uh, this little red wire plug uh, wired into your reverse input for the stereo to know when you're in reverse gear, then you plug this into the camera at the back and the other end of the red wire to your reverse power at your light. Now, the camera needs power and ground, so that's what this is for. So this plugs into the camera the black needs to go needs to go to ground and the ground could be any like it can't go to plastic and I you want to make sure you find like a good screw like a good connection for it so I forget where I did mine but it was somewhere back in here and there's a, a good ground um, like you need to attach it so for example right here you could put a, a bolt in there so if you could bolt your ground to that that would be a good ground the power I found because I have a cigarette outlet back here. So here's a cigarette outlet, which has constant 12 volts when you have the ignition on. So I wired it to that. So I have constant 12 volts there. And the reason why I wanted constant 12 volts was because um, with that stereo, the Sony, 
you can actually turn the rear camera on all the time while driving to see like if there's something in the trailer or something like that. So you want constant power. Now some people, what they do is they wire their 12 volt power for their camera, this 12 volt, to the reverse power just like the reverse input. And the reason for that is because that way the camera's not powered up all the time and the camera turns gets powered up as soon as you put it into reverse. So when you put it in reverse, you have power sent to your reverse lights and then you should have the camera turn on and also the reverse input of the stereo. So just to reiterate, because I'm sure this is going really fast, yellow end to the stereo, red end to the reverse input for the stereo. Other end of this cable goes to your camera and the other end of this little red wire needs to go to your reverse input, which usually the best place is your reverse lights at the back of the vehicle. Just one of them's good. So that's that cable. Next one is the power for the actual camera. So your two options are red going to a constant battery power, constant 12 volts. Or you could also wire this, so you could almost basically you splice these two together and then wire it so it is also fed off of the reverse light at the back. And then the black goes to ground. Any good ground would work, like I showed you there, um, anything like that. So that's how you basically have to wire this. It's kind of a pain to root it from the front, but when you think about it, all you have to do is plug that in and wire it to your reverse input the stereo, run it to the back, and then you can put all your interior back together. So that's pretty much it for wiring the camera. Um, so now I'm gonna probably let this set for another 30 minutes just cause I want it nice and strong when I go to put it in. And then once it's set, then I'm going to reinstall the bumper, um, plug everything in and then make sure it works. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do all that. So we'll see how it turns out in a second. Okay, so I have the camera installed. Uh, looks pretty good. Let's get nice and close. Not bad. Could be a little bit cleaner. I'm going to uh, just use some black silicone just to fill in around those edges a little bit. But uh, from standing back, you can't even see it there. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, now I'm just going to jump in. Throw it in reverse. And let's see how it looks. Okay. Ignition on, reverse, there we go, looks pretty good, so, uh, flash is on, I'm trying to block the flash, okay, so looking at the left side, so looking at the left, you can almost see the edge of the garage door, you can see the whole hose and everything like that, and on the right side you can see my garbage can, on the far right side and everything so just to give you an idea of how wide angle this is let's jump out and look at where those are so on the left side right close to the garage door on the right side you can see the whole garbage can so if I come out here to look so this is the left side so you can see almost to there you can see so that's how wide angle it is. So from so you can see the all the way to the side. So if a car's coming, say from where if you're backing out a spot, a car's coming from the side, you'll be able to see it pretty quick, uh, pretty well. And then over here, there's the garbage can. So I'll stand over here. So there's the garbage can there. You can see that fully, no problem. And there's the back of the car. So very wide angle, um, really nice image. I really like it. And uh, what I'll do is I'll try to take a video of it um, at night time just to see how it looks at night. Um, and just to get a full rounded idea of what the camera really looks like. But that's the basic install. Uh, I think that two part epoxy is going to hold up just fine. And like I said, I'll do a little bit of silicone around there, but overall I'm actually pretty happy with how this looks. It's not as clean as the first camera, but overall like operation this camera is significantly better so I'll take the that over the looks any day so yeah I'll try to get a video of this at night just to see the overall quality
So I just want to make a quick part of the video showing um, the picture quality uh, when it's dark out. So it's pretty late at night. Um, it's fairly dark out. There's still a bit of brightness out, but uh, the video um, kind of makes it seem a lot brighter than it is. It's definitely like, you know, you need your headlights on and such while driving. Um, so I'm just going to turn the camera on. Then we're just going to see what the picture quality is like. So there's the picture quality at nighttime. Um, like I said, it's not like pitch black out right now, but um, definitely need to like drive with your headlights on kind of darkness. And the brightness of the camera is extremely bright. It almost it pretty much looks like just daytime, actually. So uh, yeah, the quality at nighttime uh, is actually a lot better than I thought it would be. So yeah, overall, um, we really like this camera. The wide angle has been great. And the picture um, uh, resolution is great. And the quality of the image is great. And then also the when it's like the low light conditions is also really good. Um, even if it's like pitch blackout, as soon as you put it in reverse and your backup lights turn on, it really lights everything up really nicely. So yeah, two thumbs up for this camera and um, I hope this uh, video was helpful.